It finally happened there, bro, right? We finally have the Mitsuri, the Whip Girl Blade uh, user. Best episode easily. Best episode, finally. And I can't wait to see the final episode course next week. Hello, one more here. My throat's really bad, I didn't rest apart. Sorry about that, right? It is quite hard to speak, honestly. Hope you see guys subscribe and share the videos and all right. Uh, but honestly, it'll be a downer, but. This is a little problem doing like weekly anime stuff, season anime stuff, right? Because I probably wouldn't, I probably shouldn't actually do the video. Like honestly, I feel I'm, I'm really exhausted at the reaction. Like it's really hard to breed as doing the reaction. So I probably shouldn't have done it. But, but you know, whatever. <laughs> but it's, but it's, yeah, please sympathy point, sympathy like. No, but seriously, it is, it is interesting. I said that's silent interesting because you, you definitely probably wouldn't have done this if I was doing, you know, like some other kind of, I mean, I have other channels too, you know. So my other challenge is to take a break, but here I'm like, okay, we gotta keep doing it. It's every Sunday, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, Hashirama of Love, right, of course. Mitsuru Kanjiro, obviously, the best character in the anime. And she is my favorite character, because, you know, she is foxy. No, but she's hot. Definitely, I mean, by far the best wife in the anime. No questions asked, by far. Uh, but I don't think she's the funniest character, too. Yeah, I think she's the hottest character, most attractive character, but also the funniest character, right? Um, you know, I like like Sword, Sword, Hayami, so one, Yamato, so one, right? But she's not, uh, I don't know, I, think I, I like Hana more, you know, yeah, Hana, Hana Saba, which of course Mitsuki, Mitsurui, uh, I mean, sorry, because I'm tired, <laughs> I can't, can't even pronounce her name correctly, Mitsurui. Uh, obviously, so she's kind of like my favorite voice actor then in the anime as well. I said it on the review earlier, but yeah, so absolutely, that's a big, you know, it's always an extra part, right? So, but if I watch um, Golden Kamui, Ogata is voiced by Kenry Sudas, who has uh, also has Sudas on his birthday today, right? So, congratulations on Sudas on. For example, that's also a bonus, right? When you have one of your favorite voice actors, like, um, uh, for example, that anime. If you watch um, any anime, right, where Zoro appears, right? Kazuya, when he comes in, Kazuya, Kazuya, yeah, yeah. Nakai, he always sounds like Zoro. He only has one voice, and that's a Zoro voice, yeah. Not to be that, but he always only sounds like Zoro. And I'm like, oh, it's Zoro! <laughs> you know? And it's Zoro! Yeah, like, you're always like, oh my god, it's Zoro! Usually he plays like a bad guy, or a sword guy, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, for me, my point of course is that it's a large part of the episode. It's definitely better, because I do love her voice. She's a very good, like, mostly drama and, like, comedy actor, right? She does a lot of this, like... For example, she's in Mars comes like a lion and so on, right? She does a lot of these like, you know, kind of comedic slash drama moments, right? So she's really the perfect voice for Mitsurui. And the whole flashback is found, this and here, I love it. And he's like, oh, you're giving me a present, you love me, oh my god, I can't, come here, I mean, it's, it's really good, right? Yeah, she's like, oh, come on, yeah, yeah, let's kiss. You know, <laughs> she's really, really excited about getting her, a leg warmer and so on. So that was good. Uh, Shibi Mitsurui was awesome. The tiny little, uh, muscular, tiny little Mitsurui being all flexing and so on. And I had been spoiled before though, because that has been memed and so on a lot, right? But that she actually doesn't have pink, green hair. She is Mutri. I mean, she has, of course, but I mean, she's born with black hair, right? She eats a lot of uh, Mutri, so they turns pink. Um, that scene was hilarious. She's just like, and her, her family, her mom and dad is like, yeah, it's awesome, gumbare, <laughs> they used to keep eating, keep eating, <laughs> basically, right, yeah, they don't, she had Genki parents, and like I said with uh, Miss Hashira flashback, this flashback I really, I also found the, the best flashback, right, honestly, by far, because this is so different, right, it's just fun, it's kawaii instead, yeah, it's just hilarious, it's mostly it's a comedy flashback, like, it's so much, different it's it really needed i said that you know two weeks ago right we really, really needed like another flashback everyone just can't have like my mom got killed in front of my eyes or whatever and people always defend the anime saying that no but it's of course why else would they kill demons what about demons just being bad guys you know what i mean so i really want to stress on that here but i think people are really excusing this anime in a weird way when it comes to well everyone has to have a sad backstory dead demon slayer parents and i no they don't because you, you think about for example if you're a cop right you know some people are cops or policemen right or whatever something that sort or whatever right some people are that because they might have been a victim for a crime right maybe their parents are victims maybe their mom you know were attacked or whatever right and now they want to help people right you know what i mean um for example some people are doctors right like oh they, they work with saving children that has cancer or whatever right you know what i mean but in either of these cases 
the person doing their job, like, oh, I want to be a cancer pediatrician, cancer doctor, and save, you know, six children, that person doesn't have to necessarily have grown up sick themselves, nor do they even have to know anyone that has been sick when they were kids. Right? They, this, this, this might be have the general understanding that, oh, yeah, you know, it, it's bad when kids die of cancer, so I'm going to be a cancer doctor, you know what I mean? Like, they might just have that feeling without actually themselves knowing anyone that had cancer, right, growing up or whatever, for example. Uh, and likewise, a cop might never have been a victim of a crime, or a family member have nev never maybe been a victim of a crime, right? But you, if you go through school and life and so on, right, you grow up, you're a teenager and so on, you're obviously going to see people, you know, being victims of crime and so on. So you might, like, not necessarily you know them personally, but you're going to see that, oh, you know, this guy already in the newspaper kind of thing, right? So on TV and so on. So you might, of course, still grow up and say, I want to be a cop, right, and protect people, you know what I mean? Um, there is no reason whatsoever, and this flashback shows that, there is no reason whatsoever, like in this flashback mystery, to have her necessarily see her mom and dad getting like completely eaten by a zombie thing or whatever. She doesn't need to have that, right? She doesn't need to have this like super sad, super crushing backstory where all her siblings get murdered. Or there is no need for that. She can just be aware of that there are bad guys doing it to other people. Especially, as I said earlier in other review, because she is the love Ashina. That is all. Like when Tanjiro and Gen Yanesco saves her, she's all like, Yeah, you guys love me! Woo, power up! You know, she's all like, Yeah, let's have sex afterwards. That's, yeah, Tanjiro, get my boobies. Yeah, or something. Yeah, she's like, Yeah, friendship, power up, love, woo, yeah. And both Gen and Tanjiro's like, Oh, God, so she's, come, she's thirsty, man. You know, like, she's trying to sleep with those now or something. Yeah, they're both getting almost confused by it, right? Because her whole personality is like she's super thirsty to horny kind of thing, right? Ish. I mean, I said honestly, but she's obsessed with love, right? Yeah. And uh, when they're saving her, she basically got power up, right? Because, not, because she's like, yeah, they saved me. Power up, friendship and love, you know? Yeah, nakamas, you know, basically, right? Yeah, woo, honey. Basically, so given her personality, given her powers or whatever, love reading, there is no need at all for her to have a sad backstory. She can have the happiest life ever in Japan, right? And then just be like aware that other people having issues with demons or criminals or whatever. And that is why she becomes a demon slayer, right, you know? And I think the fact that here, it, 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 it much more goes in that direction, right? Where she, she's like, oh, she's born with like some physical powers or whatever, and she learns about the demons. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna kill demons, you know what I mean? It's just, um, it was a very refreshing, best flashback, best backstory, honestly. It's like the only flashback where the person did happy in the She's like the only flashback character with a happy childhood, which is awesome. Uh, and that fits her, I guess, the most, but um, that was good. Uh, otherwise, I mean, yeah, speaking, the episode is is good, right? Yeah, it's just like a good fight. First, she gets owned, uh, which I think was a good scene, too, because even though I hate seeing Mr. getting owned, it made sense because she's kind of like, you know, hello, demon guy, you want to have sex, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, she's way too happy in the beginning, right? So she underestimated her opponent. Her, her bigger weakness is probably that she's kind of just too much of a good, happy girl. So, of course, she underestimated the bad guy. Get smacked by him, right? Get hit by like an air blast, and then she kind of like wakes up again, and then she gets serious. So that scene itself made sense, and then you know she gets a kind of an angry mode. She's like running around in her, her angry mode, and then that also was a pretty cool, generally a pretty good looking scene, right? Um, and then we see Genya, Nesco, and Tanjiro trying to kill the bad little, little guy, the Smurf. And Genya is never makes any sense, right? We need more of Genya. How is he so immortal? How can he do it? He bites a tree, his body has been destroyed like three, four times by now. How is he such a demonic, immortal healing guy? Yeah, he just like does everything. He throws a tree like a, a kilometer or something. I don't know. They bite through the bark of the tree snake thing. But that guy is like, his physical powers are insane, man. Yeah, they, they need to explain getting a better later. And the Nesco is clearly getting some kind of fire power up of, of sorts, right? Um, what more happened? Well, I mean, Yen is the next part too. I am definitely wondering what's going to happen next episode because. It really felt like they are basically gonna kill the Smurf, you know, like the last minute. Yeah, they're like, you know, going after Smurf, and I'll be like, how he survived that? Um, I'm sure he's gonna get a flashback, like for 10 minutes or whatever. But next episode is at least, it said 70 minutes in the last preview, um, but that doesn't make much sense, because I never heard a 70 minute episode before. But, so it's probably like 70 minutes with commercial breaks, to make an hour. So it's longer than expected, right? Yeah. 70 minutes, longer than expected. But, but regardless, I mean, if it's, let's say it's 60 minutes then, because I still think they're gonna be at least like four or five commercial breaks. I very much doubt it's gonna be 70 minutes without commercial break. There, there's no way. 
I'm just being pragmatic here, but it's no way it's going to be 70 minutes plus commercial breaks. No, it's 70 minutes minus like five, six commercial breaks. Okay? It's like 60 minutes. Okay, it's not like last time, like last year. It's not going to be 70 pure minutes. No way, no way. Uh, that that oh, well, never happened before. But anyway, I definitely wonder how are they going to make it like three episodes next episode. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm only bit of spoiler in the comment section, but I definitely oh he's gonna he's gonna transform again I guess he's gonna Ham Tam Tengu is gonna be like actually I got a seven form <laughs> yeah he's gonna be like I can actually defuse fuse up or something or someone else is gonna have to go in move some or someone yeah I definitely expect something else to happen next episode is gonna be crazy like another bad guy is gonna enter I I that that's what I'm guessing guys okay that's my last guess bit of spoil my guess is that another demon is gonna pop in, right? Another upper demon will be like, I'm also here, you know? I feel like another demon is gonna come in, right? I think he's gonna die. And then the next upper rank demon, number two, whatever, is gonna appear and be like, hey, come on, let's fight, you know? Something like that, because it feels like I have a very hard time seeing how Hantenengu is gonna be for another 70 minutes, because he's been, he's been owned, he's been owned like three, four times now. It's almost getting like boring if he's gonna be the guy for order. Honestly, I'd be so much disappointed if it's just him for another 70 minutes. That being said, I guess he might die quicker. And then it's like 30, 40 minutes of something else. Like another arc or a start of another storyline or some other bits, right? I suppose. It can go, I guess, something completely else, like a non-fight thing. But I really doubt that. Yeah, I think, I think it's going to be a third demon coming in. That would be my guess. Number three coming in, being like, well, I was waiting for the moment because we're weak. I am number three or two or something. You know, yeah, I wait for someone else to pop in there and be like, my time, you know. That my guess. And I'm going to have a great day.